Hey there, Dino. How's it going? I'm gonna take this martini from you. Yeah, martinis. Let's see what this is about. Oh! Oh, that's foul. Oh. Oh, yep. 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 Hate olives. Hey there, book people. You are watching Book Vlogging with Jan. I'm Jan, and I have a confession. I miss Mad Men. I do. Now, I don't normally like my videos to be anchored to a fixed point in time. If you've seen any of them, then you know that I like to speak to the varieties of human taste and experience. Why we read, what we read, and how it helps us to better understand our world and our place in it, instead of recommending books based on an established like. That said, I really miss Mad Men. I need books that is going to hold me over till the final, final season airs, and I'm sure you do too. So, the format of this video is going to change a little bit. Instead of the usual rating system, if you want to call it a system, I am going to isolate certain aspects of the show and recommend books to you based on similar content and tone. So without further ado, these are my recommendations to hold you over until the final, final season of Mad Men airs. If you enjoy the private lives of men like Don Draper, Pete Campbell, and Roger Sterling, men who have an uncanny ability to destroy their families and home lives, then you might enjoy... All you enjoy is probably the wrong word. Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. Frank and April Wheeler are in the sixth year of a disastrous marriage. April is deeply depressed and Frank thinks it's just not his problem. At the very start of the story, April tries and fails to fulfill Frank's fantasy of her. Eventually the couple do decide that they will take their entire family to France and things do get better for a bit. Frank, feeling good, initiates an affair with the secretary at work and April discovers that she's pregnant. Frank, finally getting ahead at the, on the job, she does everything he can to convince April to give up her plans to have an abortion so that they can stay in New York. He debases and dehumanizes her into non-action, and it has disastrous consequences. Mad Men doesn't dare go this far. You're gonna love it. Or hate it. You're not gonna be the same. I'm serious. A friend of mine saw the film and created an alternate happier ending, and he that was his memory. I had to correct his memory of the story. There's a character named John who says, Hopeless emptiness. Plenty of people are on to the emptiness, but it takes real guts to see the hopelessness. So, entertainment! If the Peggy Joan scene has always been your thing, then have I got the book for you. The Best of Everything by Rona Jaffe goes further than Mad Men in representing women in an office environment. In Mad Men, we get to see the glimpses of the various typists, operators, and secretaries near the beginning of the series, but as one or two of their characters develop, they move out of the women's only environment and into the executive environment where they're surrounded by men. That doesn't happen in this story. The story follows four women. Caroline, the typist who took any job in order to forget her jilting, but quickly aspires to move out of the typing pool and become an editor. April, the out-of-towner who loses her heart to an undeserving man, but becomes the woman that every man wants on his arm. Barbara, a single mother who embodies loneliness, but works hard to achieve her goals. And Greg, the glamorous New York actress who craves domesticity. Although a work of fiction, this book was practically an expose when it was published in 1955, and it quickly became a film starring Joan Crawford. You can even see Don Draper reading this book in Bed with Betty in Season 1, Episode 6, Babylon. So if the women of Mad Men have ever caught your eye, here's your chance to examine their lives. 
Okay, so this next book may seem like a little out of left field, but trust me on this one. Especially if you enjoy Ken Cosgrove's budding career as science fiction writer Ben Hargrove. <laughs> ben Hargrove. The episode where they all take speed or the final scene of the last season finale, Burt Cooper's surrealistic song and dance number. I'm talking about Ubik by Philip K. Dick. Dick was most prolific in the mid to late 60s and 70s. He was a writer who used science fiction to explore the reaches of his imagination. To Dick, science fiction wasn't just a creative pulp story, it was pure creativity itself, with nods to pulp. Narratively, Ubik is about a corporate magnate, Glenn Runciter, who will debug your office of secret sealing telepaths for a fee. Runciter bridges the gap between death and life as he helps his employees by giving them cans of Ubik, aerosol spray that prevents the things around them from reverting back to 1939 versions of themselves. Things like radios, cars, elevators, hotels. It's important to note that this book takes place in futuristic 1992. Thematically, Ubik asks what Dick asked in nearly all of his works, namely, what is reality? And if you enjoy a show where the main character wears the identity of a dead man and his greatest power is selling people different versions of reality, you might want to check out Ubik. Just saying. That's what we're all watching, right? We don't know what reality is, Don Draper? Who are you? In 1963, advertising magnate David Ogilvie exposed the inner workings of the Madison Avenue advertising business in Confessions of an Advertising Man. But if you're with a title like Confessions, if you're looking for juicy, gossipy industry stories, you won't find that here. Go back and read the best of everything. First and foremost, Confessions is a business book. This is not what Roger Sterling calls the book that everyone writes. It should be called A Thousand Reasons I'm So Great. Ogilvy outlines all aspects of managing and operating an ad agency. That's not to say there aren't any parallels to Don Draper and Mad Men. Of course there are parallels. If there aren't any parallels, it wouldn't be in my video. Like Draper, Ogilvy was copywriter and creative director of his agency, and like Draper, Ogilvy believed in using personal experience in his advertising. He writes, I have a theory that the best ads come from personal experience. Some of the good ones I have done have come out of the real experience of my life, and this somehow has come over as true and valid and persuasive. Of course, if you're reading from critically from a cultural studies perspective, you can argue that this is indicative of a larger problematic precedence that excludes all but the executive white male perspective. More comparisons can be made when considering Ogilvy's and Draper's strengths, the creative department. As you may remember, in the last season, SCP's creative department were moved out of their creative lounge to make way for the installation of a new IBM computer. According to Ogilvy, copywriting is paramount in any ad agency. The influences of David Ogilvy's Confessions of an Advertising Man on AMC's Mad Men are stunningly visible but read for Ogilvy's influences on creating demand in our culture today. If you couldn't tell by now, these are my favorite aspects of Mad Men. The personal destroyers, the professional women, the unrealism, and the office management. Did I just say office management? Yeah, I did. I'm one of those people that likes really effective management. Deal with it. These are what make me coming back week after week and I expect that these books will hold you over until the final, final season of Mad Men airs. After that, you are going to need much more help than just me recommending books to you. Maybe I'll start a support group. Could have used one when The Sopranos ended. As always, thank you for watching from me, Jan, and Book People, Texas's largest and Austin's number one independent bookstore. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can check out my previous videos.
children's and teen books that pass the Bechdel test, and women of science fiction. You can also find more of my videos by subscribing to my channel, youtube.com slash jan at random, or you can find them on bookpeople.com.